Hey everyone and welcome to the channel. A floating tail stock die holder seems to be one of those really popular beginner machining projects that I've never really gotten around to making. So I thought it might be fun to give this popular little project a go and make some plans along the way. I'll pop them in the video for a screenshot if you'd like to give this version a go. If that sounds like something you're into, hang around to see how this one turns out. Now I do want to try and make this from some parts that I have around. A hunk of brass, some 1045 bar stock, and this little bit of bronze. Well, we had a direction change in the middle of the project and I didn't use it, so it can stick around for another day. Enough of that though, let's get started. Basically, this tool only has a few parts, and nothing overly complicated, so I'll start with the part that's most likely to give me some grief. Let's start with the Morse taper. Now this project is pretty similar to the tailstock die holder I made a while back, and that other die holder I made has never let me down. But I've always kind of had a little envy any time I see someone using one of these floating ones, and letting the machine do all the work. All we'll need to do for this part is bring the whole length down to major diameter and then turn down a little area that'll become a central shaft that'll later be wrapped in brass and will ride down the center of the tool. And that should be close enough. So out comes the material and we can set it up for the Morse taper. In goes a bit of scrap and can get faced and center drilled. Then I'll wedge a dead centre into that pilot hole, with a live centre keeping it in check. Now all I need to do is dial this taper in using the old compound power feed. And that looks pretty good. Now I'll change over to the collar chuck, and I can get this taper cut. I've brought down the length of the taper to about 0.25mm oversize for the major diameter we want for the taper. And now I can just keep taking light passes until I hit that 24mm we're looking for on the big end. Now just a little reduced section at the end of the taper, break all the hard corners and give everything a bit of a clean. And using another taper sleeve that I've got around, we'll see if it works. And that'll do. Now this can go to the side for a minute while we get to work on the next part. Now let's talk really quickly about what's going on here. I get that this probably isn't completely necessary, but I do like the idea of having something with a little more lubricity. Lubricity? That sounds like a thing. As a bit of a plain bearing between the sliding steel surfaces. And bronze would have been better than brass. But hey, we're making this out of what I got around. This is a pretty straightforward part. I'll just turn down the OD to dimension, and then I'm just gonna drill out to a size that should be a pretty snug press fit on the steel section we turned down earlier. And drilling probably also isn't perfect. It probably should be bored to size, but I did plan ahead well enough to make sure that the first part would be a press fit for a drill that I have on hand to save me the fuss. Then a little lead in chamfer, and that's all we should need for the minute. And now all we need to do is press these two together permanently. So over to the fly press we go. And yeah, I'm sorry. I couldn't say that I managed to nick myself and was bleeding on the part, but I guess you can't say that I don't put my all into these videos. Now 
And nailed the handle parking. There we go. I caught up eventually. I did make this bushing a little long, so I'll quickly go and whiz off the excess to make it nice and smooth on the belt grinder, and then just one more step to go on this part. Over on the mill, I'll spot drill and drill all the way through for a pilot for an M6 tap. Then bring in an end mill and make a little flat spot for the bolt heads to sit nice and flush against. Then all we need to do is flip it over to get a matching flat on the other side. Now I managed to miss filming it, but all I did was put the drill I used to drill the original hole back into the mill, flip the part and use the drill bit to line up the holes so that the two flats are pretty close to exactly opposite. And pretty close is close enough for today. Then run through an M6 tap, and that's the first part done for the minute. And now I can jump onto the die holder part of this, well, die holder. And back to the lathe, and apparently I was feeling brave. That's a, that's a fair whack of stick out. Doesn't sound great. There we go. Back to safety with a little center support. Then I just need to whittle the stock down to this kind of shoulder. And I couldn't tell you why I kept persisting with that dull insert for that long. It was cutting like crap, but I just did not give up on it. Lucky that surface finish is about to get covered up. Then I'll bump in a little radius with a round button insert to give us a nicer transition on the step and onto the knurling. If you follow along with the channel, you know that I have a much nicer knurling tool than this. But this one does have some really coarse wheels that don't fit into the one that I made. And I want this to be as grippy as I can on this one. So the old cheap knurler will do. And that looks grippy enough. So a little chamfer and onto the central bore. I'll just drill it enough to get it started with a boring bar. Then check the progress with a snap gauge and then the bore can go out to a nice sliding fit on the brass sleeve from earlier. And that's about all I can do from this end. So off it comes. Good catch. Call me lazy, but I hate changing over to the four jaw if I don't absolutely have to. But I have found that if you take a few minutes when using something soft to protect the part, you can actually tap this into a pretty darn close with a little patience. All we need to do from this end is clean up that face and bring in the boring bar again to take out that little area for the die. And that measures up pretty well. So some quick cleanup and off to the mill.
then we can simply center it in and spot drill through that knurling. Over to a twist drill, and I'm just going to drill all the way through the part. What I'm thinking with a drill all the way through is it's going to help me on a couple of fronts. It's going to make plunging in with a slot mill a little bit easier, but it's also going to give me a reference close to 180 degrees from the first hole to make it easier on the other side. Well, that's the idea anyways. So from there, I'll just mill a slot, flip, check that it's pretty close, and burr on through to the opposing side. Easy game. Now to clean everything up a little with the wrong tool and set up for the last operation. Using a couple of drill bits, I'll pop them through the slots and use them to level out on the vice jaws. Then I'll check that I'm pretty flat with a digital angle gauge and lock it down. Gotta hope that doesn't move. It feels sturdy enough, I think. Then I'll spot and drill a pilot for an M5 tap, get the threads cut, and that part is done. Now for the last little thing to make this all work. I'll take a piece of scrap and drill it for M6. Tap it, and then screw in an M6 bolt. Then I can just take the rough texture off the outside of the bolt head to make everything slide nice and smooth. Originally, this is where the bronze from the start of the video was going to come into play. The idea was to turn down some pins and press fit this all together, but I really wanted to be able to take this apart if I ever wanted to make a different outer sleeve for a larger die, but you could definitely do that if you didn't want to use some bolts. But that's everything done, so it's time to bang it all together. Not much on the assembly of this one, just the outer sleeve over the taper, and into those slots goes the turn down bolts. And that feels pretty slick. I think that action will be perfect once I drop a little oil on there. And in goes a die with a grub screw. Fits very nicely. But who cares how well it fits together if it doesn't work? So let's test it out. And that's not bad. Like anything, I'll need a couple of practice goes to really get it sorted, but it stayed nice and straight, which is I guess what we care about most. I did mess up a pinch of the thread at the end. I didn't leave the die enough room to retract on that pass, but now I know, and for yourself, if you do have a go at this one, make sure you leave a little space at the end of the die to make sure it clears the threads when it's retracting. And yeah, I'm one of those people now. Apparently everything I make nowadays needs its own grid finity tray. 
and can have a home in the top drawer of the old toolbox. But overall, I'm really glad I finally tackled this one. It's clearly a popular for a reason, and it'll definitely be a handy addition to the shop. Thanks for hanging around everyone. If you like the video, please consider giving it a like and subscribing to the channel. See you on the next one!